my name is Greg Tobo. I am a full-time professional magician and a historian of magic history. And this is how a magician and his magic trick helped to advance the Industrial Revolution. Now, when we talk about the Industrial Revolution, you have to understand there's lots of different ways we can slice and dice this. We can look at it from a societal or social aspects, economic aspects, political aspects. I'm going to use the traditional technique of analyzing the Industrial Revolution in terms of technology. And one key piece of technology during the Industrial Revolution was this spinning frame. This was an automated machine that could produce thread quickly and easily, but there was a problem. In 1784, this machine's patent was due to expire. That meant that England was going to find itself with lots and lots of thread and not very many people to weave it. The question comes up, could you then automate weaving? And by and large, people thought that this would be an impossible task. Weaving was much more complicated than spinning. There were 17 different touch points that the operator had to manipulate and control the tension of the threads to position it. And so most people felt this could not be done except for one man. His name was Edmund Cartwright. He was not an inventor by trade, he was actually a clergyman. And he, um, he had no experience with weaving. But what he did know was that this could be done. Religion is magic! <laughs> <laughs> and, and the reason he believed was because he had seen a machine that could play chess. And he realized that if a machine could play chess, then how much more difficult could it be to build a machine that would weave? Well, unfortunately for him, he was only halfway right. The machine that he saw playing chess was actually a magic trick. This was called the Turk. And although it's designed to look like a human, there was simply gears and levers in, inside. And this machine toured all across Europe and America. Uh, Benjamin Franklin played against it. Napoleon Bonaparte played against it, Edgar Allan Poe played against it, they all lost. Actually though, it, like I said, it was not a machine per se, not a thinking machine, there was actually a human agent behind it. And the human agent was this gentleman here, Wolfgang von Kempelman. Wolfgang worked for Marie, uh, the Empress Maria Theresa in, in Austria-Hungary, and she challenged him to create something really astonishing. And this was the machine he created. It was a hoax, it was a fraud, but it told a very important story. The story it told was that machines are capable of anything. And that was all the impetus that was needed for Edmund Cartwright to go out and build the first power loom. He received a patent for that in 1785. And then in 1809, after several improvements had been made, British Parliament paid him the sum of 10,000 pounds because of the contribution he had made to the economy because now the, they, could, they could gather up the resources, the cotton and the wool from the colonies, they could bring it back to England, spin it into thread, weave it into fabric, bring the fabric back to the colonies, and sell it to them at marked up prices, and thus the Industrial Revolution began in earnest. Now there was one more person, there was one more person who witnessed the Turk, this, this chess playing machine, his name, I'll hold off for just a second, but he did not think it was a real thinking machine. He thought that it was a, a magic trick. But he started to think about chess and how chess is played. And we're having queens uh, valued at five and a rook valued at... <laughs> okay, so he decided that if a machine could add and subtract, thank you. If a machine could add and subtract, it could, it could then be able to play chess. So this man was Charles Babbage. And after witnessing the Turk, he sat down and wrote two papers, one called the Difference Engine and the other called the Analytical Engine. He even began to build some very basic, rudimentary thinking machines. Um, now, of course, he was working with cogs and, and, and wheels. He was at an extreme disadvantage. In fact, it would be 150 years later when we had semiconductors before we could fully realize his true vision. But both the Industrial Revolution and the Information Revolution owe their starts to Wolfgang von Kempelen and his magic trick, the Turk, the automated chess playing hoax. My name is Greg Tobo, and this has been How a Magician and His Magic Trip Helped to Advance the Industrial Revolution.